101.3 my fam in the morning with poison it is 8 10 totally awesome 80s wednesday the hairband edition and we are live on facebook right now as we bring in our guest uh, state representative mike soder there you are mike hey mike well you were just there in the queue oh there you are and your mic is off um yeah there we go i'm i thought my my uh my phone my uh earbuds were working but i Yes, they're not. So yeah, uh, technical that's difficulties. difficulties. That's the problem with uh, with having technology at our fingertips. Yeah, is it, it can go wrong so many ways. Um, exactly. I, I was just playing CDs and they started skipping. That's old technology, but right. Well, it's not too windy, so I think you can hear me out here. And I got you. Um, you know, and uh, this is uh, I'm actually here in Bellingham in the Common today, and it's a great day. And uh, you know, uh, things start. Things are here. This day is finally here. We, as much uh, a lot of us, advocated for the governor to move up all the August first date. We have uh, uh, seen data, and um, he's a very data-driven person. But uh, he um, definitely moved forward on opening up on May 29th, 100 percent. Everybody's going to be at capacity. Baseball games, everything. We can have kids' sports games. Um, you know, uh, you can go enjoy your kids' sports games without wearing a mask outside, and and uh, just it's it we're here i always said the light was at the end of the tunnel ray and 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 you know it's here it is a year and maybe two months away um right this time last year i think we were just thinking about man are we ever going to be able to celebrate fourth of july and all that stuff and now it's it just seems like it's uh it's working and you know you gotta give a lot of kudos to the past administration for getting those vaccine out because if we couldn't get the vaccine out uh when we did um that this president could execute then uh it's it's uh you know we'd still be kind of struggling here i think with uh some numbers and it would have held us back but restaurants everything you are going to be playing uh music again and everybody's mm. going to be dancing and weddings and um you know you know we we we, we still got to get people vaccinated and those that choose to get vaccinated i'm, I'm going to be in bellingham this morning uh, they're running a clinic and, and truly, you know, I know there's a lot of people, you know, why are you doing that? It, 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 it's tough. You know, it makes my child feel like they're being, you know, discriminated against if if they don't take the vaccine. And really, it wasn't the school district um, that did it. it they they use the place, uh, make it convenient. It's a convenient for a lot of parents who are working, getting their lives back in order, trying to get them to an appointment. It, it just makes it convenient. And if you choose and no one was forced to do it. Um, so, um you know, you had to opt in to do it. And if you didn't opt in, you didn't opt in. Um, but it's convenient. I'm going to go up there today. And then Uxbridge is doing one on Sunday um, uh, that they're going to have at the high school in Uxbridge. And they're going to have a family uh, kind of a family fun day. We're going to be running one here in PJs, I think, next week. Uh, we're going to be doing one at PJs where, you know, you'll be able to uh, have a meal and everything if you get vaccined. And, um, and this is great. It's a great way of just trying to, like, make people feel comfortable that you could still socialize, you could still have this vaccine, and and um, if you choose to have it, and it, it, it's it's effective, it's working. We see the numbers dropping down. Um, we just got to keep it up and keep going. So uh, yeah. we've got a lot to do. There's a lot of emergency uh, stuff that's going to end. Drinks to go, outdoor seating um, uh, contingencies, things like that. Uh, the legislature is going to be very busy. I hope over the next few weeks. I hope we don't lollygag this. I hope we start getting into session next week and as soon as possible and start really uh asking the legislators to get involved and and taking some of these things that we learned this past year i mean drinks to go um extending uh you know unemployment insurance payments uh there was a uh, amendments passed yesterday that i'm hoping that will make it through all the way through the senate and the governor's desk that will help some of the unemployment insurance uh issues that we're seeing out there with uh um some folks uh and the reason i came here to bellingham is that this weekend they're going to be celebrating the memorial day um uh, celebration here and you know it's going to be small it's not going to be the normal parade but yesterday we passed the uh holyoke uh um uh, soldiers home bill which means that in holyoke there's going to be a brand new soldiers home and no veteran out there uh or anywhere should ever have to suffer um <laughs> we saw there happen last year during this pandemic um and we're going to have a brand new updated facility. And the reason I'm excited about being here, and I thought it was a little bit sentimental sitting on this bench that I donated to the park, my family. And, um, you know, it's it's a lot of veterans, um, uh, you know, desperately wanted to see that passed. And, and it's, a, it's it's we're moving in the right direction. So there's a lot to right. celebrate, a lot of things doing, but there's a lot of work ahead. 
Yeah, let's go back just a little bit. We're opening at 100%. Does that worry you at all from like, let's just say stadiums, 25%, and then we're not gradually opening. It's just a free for all. Um, does that worry you at all? Well, what's wor what worries me is, and I know some people are going to take this comment out of context, need to get off unemployment. The $300 extra payment is not going to last forever. It ends the first week in September. New Hampshire and a lot of states are already getting out of it. Um, there's a lot of jobs out there. What worries me about the 100% is we don't have enough people to work <laughs> at um, these facilities. These jobs are available. They're there. They want to bring all these people back. But the problem is when you get an incentive to stay out for $300 extra a week, um, some people are opting to take the summer off. Um, you know, we're not opening up at a hundred, you know, the extra $300, I said it all along, the unemployment was a stopgap. It was something we needed to do to get us through to get to this point. And I think what we should be doing as a government is we should be pulling back on that saying, well, we're opening up at a hundred percent. So July 1st, instead of September 30th, uh, September 30th or September 5th, we're going to stop the unemployment, the extra unemployment benefits. Yeah. We really need people. What people don't realize, Ray, is everything out there is costing more money. Yeah. Um, you know, inflation is here. And no one can deny the cost of milk, a gallon of milk. No one can uh, deny the cost of gasoline. Um, and the other challenge is all those people that have worked through the pandemic are seeing their co co daily lives uh, get more expensive. Um, manufacturing facilities all across the country uh, are having problems. So my biggest fear about opening up 100% is we don't have the labor workforce to do so, um, uh, to get out there. Because I think what we do have done now is we created a, a, um, a system where we just are keeping unemployment uh, high. And inflationary-wise, that's not good. And what's going to happen is eventually um, the quality of service and everything else is going to go down. So people are going to get frustrated. So I, I am a little bit worried about 100% rollout. Um, it's like going from zero to 60 in 1.2 seconds. Mm. Um, you know, it's not, uh, so yeah, we have a big labor issue. So that's my biggest concern with it. Um, the other part is supply wise. I mean, I think a lot of these big stadiums, um, you know, kind of, you know, I'm not going to say they got the upper hand on, on when things probably would loosen up, but they got a lot of money and they could decide, you know, they got smart people and they're looking at data, too. And they're saying there's no reason why the governor would keep this thing going to August 1st. Let's anticipate. Let's buy now. So we have all the soda, the beer, the hot dogs and all the things that we need to keep parks running and making it um, accessible. I think what's good is a lot of these places um, have gradually brought back a strong workforce, paid incentives to get people back. So I think like Fenway Park. Uh, Bruins games, uh, things like that. If the Bruins still are in the in, in the hunt may, uh, by then, um, and this, you know, same thing with the Celtics. I think by the time the Patriots are up and running, I think we're going to be at a point where I think people are going to say, "Okay, time to go back to work. I got to get off unemployment. I have a yeah. you know a job waiting for me." Um, and that's where we are. I think that is the biggest problem. I uh, the biggest challenge I see, Ray, is that, and. Um, you know, and uh, we need to we need to kind of focus in on that a little bit more. And I think we can incentivize. There's one way we can keep incentivizing small business is maybe try to consider as a state. Maybe it's time to end that incentive by July of uh, July 1st um, yeah. to keep people to get people back to work. It's um, scary. It's scary that a year ago businesses were closing because of covid because nobody could work. Now businesses are closing or not opening up at full capacity because people don't want to work. Right, right, and that's that's it. I mean, there's I, right. You're, you go around, you see it, you see everything from box stores to small business owners to restaurants to folks that you know you know in the um, industry and as far as that goes. I mean, it's so hard to get people to come back to work, and mm. and, and the and the and, and the problem is what you have is you're creating um, a situation that's not going to be good when you're ready to come back to work. Because yeah. if you're too late, um, you know, you're going to end up being on the outside going, what just happened? Now you're going to be really stuck, you know, because, you know, there is one thing that we all have learned during the pandemic. Yeah, we need labor, but we figured out ways to be more efficient. So I always said this all along is that, you know, as we learn and as we invest more to be more efficient, 
in our operations, sometimes labor is, you know, sacrificed. So we want to make sure that we keep things moving and going. And, um, you know, you don't want to be um, the one, the last one in just because you're getting some sort of free money when reality is you can actually be out there um, getting a job and getting paid and getting your life back in order. So, I mean, are there things that we still need to do to support folks that have been on unemployed? Absolutely, I do. Yeah. You know, I think there's things that we can do, but I think the unemployment piece would be one that we could pull back on and then let them get out to work. But if there's things out there like, uh, you know, uh, assistance and, and, and rental assistance and things like that, we, we can work at things like that. But, you know, we've got landlords that own apartments and the cost of apartments are going up just because what's happening is, um, you know, they have to make up so much cost for either lawsuits and things like that. People that weren't paying even before the pandemic that kind of got lollygagged in between of all this. It's an absolute mess and we got to clean it up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't want to I, I think we as legislators have to stop focusing in on and we should have had we should have been focusing in on the opening day uh, a little bit uh, faster. Um, but, you know, like everything else, I mean, you know, every time we think we're we're there, something in the data tells us that we're not quite there. But the governor made a great choice. Um, like I said, I never wished I, I would never wish on my worst enemy the kind of what he has gone through because sure. the fact that it's not an easy job for anybody. Um, and uh, I, you know, uh, there are things we got to learn. There are things we have to do. And the one thing I think is great about this governor is that he is going to learn from it. And, you know, if he's still our governor, uh, another term, maybe, who knows, or if the lieutenant governor is our governor, I mean, they've learned a lot to get us through any anything. If they can get us through this, then I, I think they realize they can yeah. get us through what we need to get through. So well, I guess what, I, so maybe you can help me out. What I'm not clear on is May 29th, everything opens 100%. Will there, will there still be any restrictions in place? Is there a list somewhere like it's a hundred? Everybody can go out, but you're still going to have to do this. You're still going to have to do that. Well, like schools, I mean, you know, the kids in schools and classes are still going to have to wear masks. Okay. Um, you know, but recess. Uh, you know, I know all the schools opened up yesterday. Today, Bellingham's opening up recess. You don't have to wear a mask. I don't really see much on that list. Um, okay. Nightclubs are opening. Um, they want businesses to use good practices. <coughs> so when me. they say, so when they say a nightclub is open. Does, and I know 100% capacity, I get that. But does that mean, although if there's a live band, you have to be sitting at your seats and this and that? No, no, you, no. 100%. I, 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 just, read it, I read it as nightclubs are open. I mean, they're not going to have nightclubs open if you can't dance and you can't have a band, right? Yeah. So, um, no, nightclubs are open. I mean, the way I read it, everything's open. We're going to be putting out a full detailed button down list. Okay. Um, there's not really much there, so I, you know, I'm just I waiting for the other shoe to drop. That's all. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't see any other shoe dropping. I mean, our numbers are going in the right direction. I don't think he would have done the date that he did, um, knowing that he did. And I mean, even Boston's following suit. I mean, last I think last week I posted. I think it was last week. I can't remember. Um, I posted that you know the all uh, North End uh, during all the festivals in August they're going to be opening up. Right. So. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on, you know, and um, I think that um, we're going to see things here that I think are moving us in the right direction. Um, the only thing I wish we kind of we kind of still had going on uh, next weekend is the Memorial Day um, celebrations in full force. I think um, I was a strong advocate to say, hey, let's do it. We can do this. But I, I always thought that we were going to be here come June 1st. I really did. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I'm I'm kind of like at that point of of, of this is a great place to be. We, let's just get there. A vaccination rate continues to be very high, um, and um, you know, like I said, that's what's going to keep us going a little bit here. Um, and uh, that, will, along with herd immunity, um, I think we're we're going to be fine, and right. um, we're going to be good. So now and now is the time to continue to support local business in maybe absolutely. a different kind ahead. of way. Go get a job if you need a job or maybe you just want a part time job. A great way to help a local business is to go in and work for a little while until they're back right. on their feet. Exactly. And that's what it is. And I, I can't tell people enough. I know it sounds a hard, but this has been a hard year uh, emotionally. Yeah. Just get yourselves back on track because 
I'll tell you emotionally what's going to happen. That check's going to stop. And you're going to have a tougher time when everybody's out in the workforce at the same time. Right now is a great time to go get a job, find the job you want, and actually get something that you actually might enjoy. Yeah. Instead of being pushed into something because that's all you can get. Right. And um, I would encourage everybody that's listening, don't wait. I know it sounds tempting to have the summer off and do what you got to do. Um, but, you know, let's get back to work. Let's get things moving again. Let's get this economy rolling again. Um, let's 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 make uh, this a, a, a much better uh, place than where we were a year ago. And I, I think uh, we are. Uh, I have faith that we will. And I think a lot of people, I think over the next few weeks, will realize that they can't wait. Um, Agreed. And, and they're going to be out there working. So I look forward to it. You know, when we talk in two weeks, uh, we'll be after the date. We'll, yep. we, we can Monday morning quarterback on some of the things that we see, chaos and everything else. And um, things that we need to fix. Hopefully I'll have some more updates for restaurants on things like meals to go and uh, outdoor seating complexes and things like that, that we can continue state of emergency is going to end. We need to, um, we need to put the stuff in place yep. before that ends because they're going to have to stop it at midnight on June 15th. Um, and it's a lot of them have focused and, and refocused their, um, models to include this into their daily operations. So, yeah. um, we need to do it. So, all right, Mike. Well, thank you so much. Like you said, we'll right, talk in another two weeks. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. All right. Take Stay care. Safe.